Hey y'all, Justin here, and welcome to another weekly refresher. Well, this past Sunday, I talked about overcoming your giants, and that I specifically felt like this uh, issue of giants and the Lord taking down giants was actually a prophetic message for this season and that it wasn't just us, but that I really believe we're going to begin to see some significant giants taken down corporately in the body. Um, I was reading last week uh, in my personal devotional time uh, about David and Goliath, if you recall the message, and something really stirred in me when I was reading that. And then about three more times within 24 hours, this word giant came up. And in fact, today I was just talking to Chase Spencer a little while ago and giants uh, have come up not just with her, but with uh, someone else in the office that didn't even hear the message, didn't know anything about it. And then somebody else who didn't hear the message, didn't think anything of it, mentioned something about giants again today. So this theme of of taking out the giants and, and uh, actually getting our promised land is definitely hot on heaven's radar, I believe. Um, <clears throat> you remember uh, Goliath, it says that he was six cubits or cubits in a span. So he was roughly about nine foot six. So... Um, we think nine foot six is absolutely huge, but nine foot six isn't that big of a deal when it came to giants, especially in those days. And uh, if you recall in Genesis, it says in Genesis six that there were giants in the land in those days and after, meaning after the flood. And so there's a mystery of how in the world, what gate, spiritual gate opened to allow that to happen again. Um, uh, scripture says that Nimrod began to become a mighty one in the earth. Um, many experts it, that have studied this whole Nephilim uh, phenomenon, they believe that um, that was really the process of Nimrod becoming Nephilim. So we know this, that something significantly took place with DNA, obviously, as well as on a spiritual component, meaning the nefesh of the person. Nefesh uh, means living being or uh, soul. And so obviously we don't have all the, all the details, but we do have enough hints through like First Peter and Jude that talk about what happened to these angels that chose to leave their abode and violate the... Uh, Levitical law of literally reproducing after your own kind. And so um, this subject you could go on for hours, literally. I've studied this subject for hours. and uh, But the emphasis that I felt like God was highlighting in the midst of all this is that even though you and I aren't facing, you know, like King Og, whose iron bedstead was 15 feet in length, we're not uh, trying to put on Saul's armor to take out physical giants. We are facing giants in our land. We're facing giants in our region. We're facing giants in our life. And we're absolutely facing giants in this, uh, in this nation. And I believe that the enemy has overplayed his hand. I believe wholeheartedly that God is on the move and that he is about to show up and show off and... We're called to take the land and we need to be like Joshua and Caleb and have a different spirit and not bring back a bad report to our people. And we need to recognize that the fruit is worth it. And just like David, David came against Goliath, not because he was of a champion of massive stature or anything, but he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine. He recognized that he had covenant with God and the Philistines didn't. Goliath didn't. 
And he said, I'm going to feed your, I'm going to chop your head off and I'm going to feed your body to the birds of the air today. And keep in mind, David was probably five, six, five, seven, and Goliath is like nine, six. So Goliath wasn't taking his threat very seriously. I mean, Goliath's sword was probably the size of David and may have weighed what David weighed, who knows? <clears throat> but he didn't think it was that big of a deal. And David picked up five smooth stones, which we know that Goliath had brothers. And later in the scriptures, uh, after Samuel, you actually see that they kill the brothers of Goliath, the sons of Anak. And so um, that tells you that when you go to war, be ready for the full victory, not partial. Remember when uh, the prophet had the king hit the arrows on the ground and he said, why did, and he got mad with him and he said, why did you only strike the ground three times? If you would have, uh, if you would have strike the ground six or seven times, you would have annihilated your enemy, but now you're only gonna have freedom and victory from them for a period of time. So we need to understand that God's not interested in pulling down our giants uh, and taking the giants out of the land just halfway. He wants all of them out so that we can literally step into the fullness of the inheritance that Jesus has paid for for our lives. So I want to encourage you that if you haven't faced your giants, if you haven't been willing to grab your smooth stones and take them out. Do it today. Get alone with the Lord. Ask the Lord what giant you're facing. I'm sure you probably know, but ask him, Lord. Say, Lord, I'm ready to take out the giant, Lord. I'm ready for those smooth stones because I come in your name and I have covenant with you by your son. And so I am excited uh, in the midst of all the wild, crazy shakings of our country and our world and birth pains getting closer together, Jesus is on his throne. The government has been, is upon his shoulders and we've been, we've been given a kingdom that cannot be shaken and that government is without end. And one day we will usher our King, our Savior, our Lord, our Father into the earth to rule and reign with him. And that's going to be amazing. So hope you all are having a beautiful, warm day. Um, I know it got really cold here. Um, it's actually only 59 degrees out right now at a little, almost quarter to three. So um, bless y'all. Can't wait to see you this weekend. Come in faith. Remember, we talked about last week what it would look like if we actually all had the same measure of faith for every Sunday as we do for special speakers and conferences and so on. Let's raise the bar of expectation of what we believe the Lord wants to accomplish in our midst. Bless y'all.